If you're new to this channel or maybe haven't watched a video in a while, the information I'm about to drop is critical to seeing through the Democrat Party state media's lies. Like Rubio stated, Democrats have denied every election that they've lost since the year 2000. They literally started the trend of election denial and using violence in response during the transfer of power. Not only did Democrats call the 2000, the 2004, and 2016's election stolen, they also rioted during both Bush's and Donald Trump's inauguration, while also making very real efforts to overturn the election results, then paint both presidencies as illegitimate. So much though that you can see both in the cases of Bush and Trump that a majority of Democrats saw both the election and president as illegitimate. As you see here, only 15% of Democrats thought Bush won, quote, fair and square with one third saying that he stole it outright. In 2017, polls showed between 57 and 68% of Democrats did not accept Trump as legitimate. And why would they? With the Democrat party's entire institutional support base, especially in the media, telling them every day that the election had been stolen by Russia. Not to mention Hillary Clinton making her rounds in the media, saying that Trump was illegitimate. Senator, she conceded she the said election. In 2000, the Black Caucus led the effort to decertify Florida and overturn in the election results. 2004, they tried again. They tried again in 2016. And they even ran with a fake elector scheme I think there are people who are pushing very hard who think that um, because of some of the constitutional perils of the emoluments clause, uh, because of the popular vote margin, because of um, a fundamental, they think, threat to liberal democracy, that the, the, that electors should be persuaded and pressured on Monday to to part with what their pledge is and vote and vote against Donald Trump. Yes, they absolutely you should do so? that. Absolutely. I, I believe right now that there are electors. They only need 38 of them who have a conscience or who are worried about a man who won't attend the daily security briefings, who uh, who we now know Russia was trying to help get elected. Michael Moore and the author of the Washington Post article went as far as to pledge money and legal services to help these electors with their legal troubles afterwards. Oh, that was different. As I mentioned earlier, we watched all of our institutions unite to join Hillary Clinton in the Russian collusion scheme, which they knew was a lie. And an obvious attempt to paint both Trump and and the election as illegitimate. Rubio pointed out Hillary Clinton's 2016 denials, but a lot of people don't know she's been a big election denier going back to the 2000 and 2004 elections, which she heavily implied were both stolen. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. As we look at our election system, I think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy, about its integrity. But this is completely different. And not just Hillary, but Democrats in general, who spent months after the 2016 election holding hearings on voting machines being rigged and hacked. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. For researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switch votes from one candidate to another. I actually held a demonstration for my colleagues here at the Capitol um, where we brought in um, folks who, before our eyes, hacked election machines, um, those that are not, those that are being used in many states. Aging systems also frequently rely on unsupported software like Windows XP in 2000, which may not receive regular security patches and are thus more vulnerable to the latest methods of cyber attack. In a close presidential election, they just need to hack one swing state, or maybe one or two, or maybe just a few counties in one swing state. As Rubio pointed out, you'll never, ever see these media hacks as Democrats about their past election denial, despite the entire trend being started and driven by Democrats. That is their entire MO after all. Set a standard for political expediency, then don't hold themselves to that standard for political expediency. And now they can just get away with anything by telling themselves that they're saving democracy somehow. Now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. 